two, one. All right, y'all. So last night we had a pretty bad storm. So just doing a lot of cleaning now. I'm gonna put this in this yard. The chickens will eat that up. But yeah, just doing a lot of cleaning right now and making sure everything is still okay and good. Cleaning out this water for Frankie. Also, gonna be refilling her water. We do that ever so often just to make sure it's remaining nice and clean. Everyone wants clean water. You see the storm last night knocked down her sign. So I gotta pick that back up. We're good there. Get this nasty water out of here. I'm just gonna let this run. While we check on the rest of the animals, y'all see the goats over here? The goats are essentially begging for food, for grain, but we haven't given the goats grain in about a week. Uh, we also stopped giving hay because our grass has finally come to life. You can see how green everything is. Um, but we are going to continue to give them grain, but just not as much as we were giving them. Um, what are you doing? Just not as much as we were giving them because they don't uh, need it. But once we wean the babies at 90 days, well, I'm sorry, once we wean the babies, because those are all girls at 120 days, then we will um, give them grain just to help out because they're going to be super stressed. Anytime you're weaning babies, it's a super stressful time. So Frankie's good. The goats are good. About to go check on Elvis and Priscilla. Check on the bucks. Just making sure everyone's good once again. All right, just filling Frankie's pool up. We've had some people comment, hey, you should give Frankie a pool. She has one, it sits right here in front of her house under her shade cloth. You can see where the grass is dead. That's where it normally sits. But yeah, Frankie's healing well. And uh, Frankie, she just wants some me time today. You know, she's usually nice and loving and cuddly. But today she's like, nah. We've also had people ask us, how do we know Frankie's a girl? And that's because boys make a very specific noise and girls make a very specific noise. And based on the noise, it's very clear that Frankie is a girl. All right, Frankie, I'll give you your space today. So essentially on a day like today, and as you can see, we're still having bad weather, but um, essentially on a day like today, what I'm doing is just my normal rounds, just making sure everyone has uh, the food they need, clean water, that their houses are still good. So next I'm checking on Zeus's house. So when I'm checking on Zeus's house, I'm just making sure that his food is gonna be ready for when he gets in here tonight, which it looks good. I also go ahead and clean out his water to make sure that, like I just said with Frankie, we all want clean water. So just making sure his water bowl is gonna be nice and clean for when he gets in here. And I go ahead and fill it up for him. All right, so when Zeus gets out of the pasture with the boys, and whenever uh, we say the boys, we're talking about the boy goats. So whenever he gets out of pasture with the boys, he'll be ready to go at his house. Normally, next, I will come check on the, the girls, the does. But once again, we're not giving them any hay right now or grain right now um, because we want them to remember what, what it's like to be goats. We don't want them to be super spoiled. And if you watch um, Lester at Longhorn Lester, or I'm a survivor sanctuary, then you already know that he had a problem at one point with his animals being overweight and just essentially waiting to be fed. Um, so his amazing vet 
really gave him some great advice and it's something we've been doing, which is you just gotta balance it out, right? You want an animal to still forage, go get their food, but also there's times where we need to supplement and feed them. And based on our calendar and how we do things on our farm, this is a time of year where we're not heavy on hay and grain. Um, so hopefully that answers that question for anyone who's wondering um, why you're not seeing as much hay and grain right now. But if you look at our goats and our goat mentor was here as recently as a month and a half ago. Yes, during that time we were on grain and hay. Um, he actually will be coming in the next couple of days but he says our goats look amazing. So our diet is working. We're doing it the right way. So everything over here looks good. After that storm, sometimes things will fall down or I have to reattach something, but everything on the Goatopia looks good. So now coming over here, just wanna see how things held up with the storm. It was the first big storm we've had over here at Graceland. Um, wind gust of 60 to 70 miles per hour. So just really want to see how things held up. And overall, it looks pretty good. Um, over here, it does look like I need to fix one thing, but it's an easy fix. I already know exactly what I need to do or can do. Um, so I'm going to fix that. And it's perfect that it rained last night because this is exactly what gave me the opportunity to see where, um, where we might have some opportunities. So yeah, it's my mom, look, she's, <laughs> she's been the camera woman, the person that's been filming me today. So my dad was in town, now my mom's in town. As y'all know, we just had our son. Um, and this is her first time seeing uh, the renovated Graceland since we finished it, so looks good yeah yeah y'all did a good job yes nice. the rain did help those flowers though that are on the front we actually have some new blooms on them so something good did come out of that rain uh so y'all know i still got to do my roost up high for the peacock so i may have tricked my mom she's about to come over here to the brush pile and help me out <laughs> we're about to find some limbs that'd be good to just use up high and or create some roost out of and uh, I have two piles. I have one pile that's up front where the cows currently are. And then I have this one in the back, which is where the boys currently are. All right, y'all, so just going through the pile to see if I could find some that are nice and sturdy and can be used. So that's a no, right? The ones that we currently have in their aviary <clears throat> all came from over here. So there are some pretty sturdy ones over here. Just gotta find them. Like this one over here, I've been having my eye on. This one for sure is a good one, y'all. So, one down. Yeah, that one's good. What are, wonder about this one. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna throw it, see what happens, you know? It's good. Okay. Oh yeah. Bam. Oh, I think I see one more. Perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna take these back to Graceland and see if there's a way to implement them. Hmm, how does that look? Maybe a little bit higher. Like taller still? Yeah, just I'm just gonna pound it down. This helps ensure that it's nice and secure in the ground and surrounded by compact dirt. Y'all, so I'm here sitting in the vehicle 
running some errands, had to go get some um, some feed uh, for the cows and the goats, um, had to go get some wood for one more piece of the aviary I want to do a little bit of work on. And I think even Pharaoh is excited. Brought him with me to the store so mommy could get a little bit of rest. We're about to go in here really quick and do this shopping. Alrighty. We got our feed and we are on our way to our next stop, which is to get the wood. And then we'll be on our way home. And the bad weather continues, y'all. This is going on a week, seriously. And here's the feed store that I go to, y'all. So right here, that's the feed store that I go to. Um, I come to the actual manufacturer location, but they sell in almost every feed store in Central Florida for sure. So if you see Knight's Feed, I swear by that feed for my goats, cows, um, literally every animal. All right, we're loaded up. Got feed, flake, wood. It's a lot. Let me show you this view. Man, I miss having a truck. But this is these are 10-foot boards. They're in here. All right, everybody. We just made it to the house. So I'm going to take Pharaoh in. He is asleep but look at him <laughs> such a cutie oh the sun i know let me go ahead and get you in the house but natalie and i will share an update with uh y'all on pharaoh he's doing great we just had his two-week appointment yesterday and uh yeah let me go ahead and get him in the house and then get all of this unloaded hey achilles what's up man how you doing all right, I gotta get this unloaded. First stop, gonna drop off this wood, then a bag or two of flake, and everything else is gonna go to the tack room in the barn. so a lot of you are new here so just a quick tour of our barn so let me back up actually alrighty so here's the view of the barn um, from the front so as you can see as you approach you have um, the same design black with white so we have shutters planter boxes with beautiful flowers some decor off of the barn is where we have the chicken coop and the chicken run and then you can see Frankie's house back there with all the signs on it because we love signs once again. Um, so off of the chicken coop, I think I have a broody hen in there. Two of them. They're not laying. Yeah, that's the one that stays in the box. <laughs> but as you walk into the barn, um, you can see that we use the same stain on everything. So it ties in the gable up there. So it ties into the porch uh, swings and all of that. And just little small details of decor all the way down. You can see in the corners there, we've placed some decor. And then you're greeted into the barn with this welcome to the barn sign. Immediately to the left, that's where we keep all of our feed. So we have uh, chicken feed, chicken scratch, goat feed, cow feed, Frankie the emu's feed. We have Bo's feed. And then we have the peacocks feed. Once again, Texas Longhorn fan, <laughs> hook them horns. And that's a wedding gift we got from uh, one of my uh, best friends. So we have five stalls. There's three on this side, two on this side, and they're all fairly large. They're not in use right now because um, all of the goats are out on pasture and Bo is up front right now because this middle stall is Bo's stall, as you can see. Um, all of the stalls are closed off 
meaning you can't freely come and go inside of them, except for this one, so that if the goats want to get out of the elements, they have a place to run to. Um, so they're either going to be sleeping here or at Goatopia, but nine times out of 10, they all sleep in this stall. Um, because once again, if it's raining, goats hate water, they could get out of the elements. And over here, we have some weaning stalls or just stalls that are great for animals that are, um, maybe you just need to separate them for whatever reason. We could use these as birthing stalls. Um, There's so many uses we could get out of these right here. But as you can see, they have smaller doors because you're letting smaller animals in here and or you're weaning off um, other animals or injured animal. Once again, there could be so many uses for um, these two stalls over here. So I guess technically you could say we have seven stalls, but six full size stalls. We have these two stalls over here. And all of the stalls have a place for the horses, which we definitely want horses one day. Uh, Natalie's a Louisiana girl, grew up with rodeos and horses all her life. So hopefully that's in our future. Um, and you've heard me talk about in the past, have your infrastructure ready. So by having our infrastructure ready, whenever we do get horses or more donkeys or whatever, the infrastructure is here. This is an antique find. I was able to get those from uh, one of my favorite antique places here in Central Florida, as was the sign, Welcome to the Barn, I showed you. Over here in our tack room is where uh, Tucker sleeps. So we have extra hay wire because there's a lot of uses for that, some tools. Um, once again, this is where Tucker sleeps. And we have a washer and a dryer in here so that we can wash our animal items separate from ours and just storage for different things that you'll need on a farm, right? So yeah, that's just a quick tour for everyone that's new. Let me go ahead and sit you down so I can get all this feed inside. Go ahead and put some of this uh, feed in the barrels. The cow feed and goat feed is literally empty. So some of that's gonna come over here and then the remainder will go into the tack room. So that's ready. trying to put the food away and he's just intent on doing all he can to be cute to maybe get some snacks I don't know but he was just over here rolling in the dirt taking a dust bath isn't that right Bo yeah yeah you're a handsome fella you're a handsome fella yeah I know so once again a lot of new people this is Bo our donkey Walking up back there, we have Coco, we have Tiny, we have Dandy, and we have our bull, WB. <sighs> bull slash steer, we're still trying to figure it out. He's supposed to be a steer, but he has a little something back there still, so we're not sure if a little was missed, and because that little was missed, is he still sterile? Or is he, can he still you know, do his thing? You know what I mean? Like there's a little bit back there still. So a little was missed, but there's only one way to find out, and that's if he breeds the girls. If he isn't a bull, then we'll have to make a decision from there um, if he is a steer, so. But Bo, what's up, man? What's up, Bo? What's up? You want a snack? I'll see what I could do. I might be able to make a deal. But uh, Dandy is our newest cow. She is a heifer and she's so cute. The cutest thing on the property right now. Don't tell the uh, baby goats I said that, Dandy. Already also, all the feed is in here. 
We keep typically the cow food on this side, the goat's food on this side. And I was showing y'all where everyone's food is at. I forgot to mention, right here in this pill is where we keep Tucker's food. And because we leave the door open for Tucker to come and go during the day, we put his food up top and on cue, you can see he easily can get up here to eat and drink. And the reason we do that is because Achilles loves cat food. So if it's on the ground, Achilles uh, 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 eat the cat food and the water, drink the water, like he doesn't have a million sources of water around here. Right, Tuck? Tell him to leave your stuff alone. But up here, Achilles can't get to it all at all, but Tucker easily can. So, yeah. Now, um, since I'm doing food anyway, I figured, look how cute that is, y'all. <laughs> Achilles loves the goats, I tell you what. That's so cute. All right, let me get back on track, finish this food so we could get to the aviary tuck. Um, but one of the best feelings, and maybe it's just me, is nice full food. So that's the cow feed, this is the goat feed. I only put in one bag in there for the goats because we're not feeding as much right now. Um, and as you can see, I have all of this on the ground. This is what we give Frankie. So we do Frankie's mix ourselves. We get chicken scratch, layer feed, non-medicated, rabbit feed, 12% sweet feed, and we also add in poultry booster. And we put it in her pail, mix it up, and that's what she eats. So this is 50, 50, 50, that's 150, plus uh, 40 pounds, that's 190 plus the poultry booster, we'll just round it to 200 pounds. Uh, one emu, 200 pounds of food. This will last us maybe two months to two and a half months, depending on how much Frankie's eating at the time. So I'm gonna sit you down, mix up Frankie's food, then get to the aviary. Alrighty, so once again, this is Frankie's uh, pail or garbage can right here in the corner. So literally all i do is pour a little bit of each in there at a time mix it up wash rinse continue and frankie loves this we've been giving her this mix uh since she's been here and we got frankie as a chick uh frankie was maybe five to six weeks old when we brought her home and we do have a video on our channel if you go back if you go back, we do have a video on our channel that essentially shows Frankie from the day we got her through essentially today and you can watch her grow with us. y'all just getting uh just getting to it now it's about an hour later and it is raining it's a little drizzle but water's never hurt anyone so i'm about to get out here and do this roof project real quick because it shouldn't take that long measure the boards cut them put them up done so still going to knock that out real quick was uh speaking to one of my neighbors stopped by um great people that's one of the things that i would say if you want a homestead or in the process of looking for land for your homestead the neighbors are so crucial so make sure you do your due diligence ask the current owner and i gave this advice in a, a previous video but anytime you're looking for real estate also achilles is trying to get the chickens not get them he wants to play with them sit good job let her go by look she's running <laughs> but um go 
to that house or that property during off hours. So go on the weekend, go in the evenings, because I guarantee you, you're gonna see some, something different that you didn't see during the house visit, good, bad, or indifferent, that may make you think twice about buying that house, that property, whatever. Let's get to it. It's raining right now. I don't know if you can tell if the phone is picking it up. Obviously, the sky is showing that. So I've been in here the whole time it's raining. Uh, you just saw me reinforce that to make sure that the water is running downhill. I also, for the extra that was hanging, I came and added some supports between the aviary and the shop to make sure that even right there, it keeps going downhill. So now I'm about to go to the outside, pull it nice and tight. I'm not, hey, no water's falling on me right now. Man, love it when a plan comes together. Once again, all of this was in my head, no designs, no sketches, no paper, napkin, software, no engineers. <laughs> uh, love it when a plan comes together. And hey, I think they're gonna like it too. One more thing I wanna show y'all really quick. You don't know this because it hasn't been in my videos, but for the past like two days, I've been running around trying to find my wire cutters, my wire snippers, whichever you like to call it. I've looked everywhere. Do y'all want to know where I found them while I was doing the roof project? Watch this. Do you see what I see? Um, I've been able to watch that there's not water running down in here any longer and that when the wind blows, the water is traveling that way and down. Um, the biggest opportunity right now is this section right here now that has water. And that's simply because as the water is running down that way, water is always gonna find your weak point, right? It found one weak point and you may be able to see it right there dripping. Easy fix, gonna take care of that. Um, about to put down some more flake there. Y'all can see that I'm, pre I'm pressure testing this um structure before just throwing our animals in here right the peahen and peacock um i think that's a mistake that uh, you can make with anything in life just trying to rush to the end results you know take your time so you can ensure you're doing it right the first time and i'm thankful that we've had this rain because i've been able to see how the water flows where it's landing where i need to fix things um, so hopefully there are some of you out there that understand that I'm not trying to make this like a three-part series or something. Yes, this is video three, but I've taken my time, especially with this video, which has mainly been about where are the weak points, where do I need to get, you know, more granular, where do I need to uh, dial in to make sure that, you know, any vulnerabilities are taken care of so that when Elvis and Priscilla are in here, I'll be able to sleep at night. Y'all will be able to sleep at night. Egypt and Mama and Sahara and Pharaoh and Nana. Everyone will be able to sleep at night knowing that A, the structure is sound. B, they're safe. And C, they're safe. <laughs> so, you know, this portion has flakes. This side doesn't. Still trying to decide what we want to put down. Do we want to put down uh, landscape fabric? and maybe put down some type of gravel, um, sand, which, I mean, this is Florida, we already have, um, wood chips, or do we just wanna do the entire thing with 
this right here. So still trying to decide, but I think this is a good start. All right, y'all. In here in Frankie's enclosure, there she is. And with so many projects going on on the property, Frankie has been getting a little jealous about why others have been getting decor and new things and she hasn't. So I have a few surprises for Frankie. Even though she's the most spoiled, look at all the signs, y'all. And these are all signs from places we've either been to, lived at, or visited. So Frankie, has the most signs of anybody more on that side but got her a couple new things right here so let me get that hung and this is my favorite sign so far by the way hey frankie you feeling nice today i think you're going through some teenager uh hormones right now you're normally nice and cuddly you know i can still see you through your window right <laughs> Oh, my girl, Frankie. All right, Frankie, let's give everyone a tour. So, see what he has his, uh, so you see she has her unwelcome sign because Frankie's not that inviting if she doesn't know you. <laughs> she does have a pool, some of you have mentioned that, but you've already seen that either earlier in this video or in our previous video. She has a mailbox for whenever she receives mail. And of course her home needs to be blessed earlier uh we've also spoken many times about um the animal shelters having addresses so frankie's house address is 0605 eva's birthday hey frankie let me get that out of your way so you don't try to peck it through the window <clears throat> but as you can see she uses her enclosure look at where she lays down and this makes us very happy because plenty of people will talk about how they put money into a shelter for their emu and they never use it. It could be raining, snowing, whatever, they could have in a shelter, and they'll just lay outside. Or Frankie uses hers. Um, her roof is a metal roof. As you can see, we put clear sections so she could get light in here, and then it goes back to metal. This is where we feed her when we know the weather is gonna be uh, rainy or windy, like it's been all week. So we come fill this bucket for her, and uh, we're actually gonna do that um, tonight. This is the flag that I just put in here. We'll see how long this lasts because emus are very curious and she's definitely gonna be pecking and pulling at that. And then this is just a sign I've been holding on to for a while. Um, I'm originally from San Antonio, Texas. Um, so yeah, just been holding on to this and you know, what better place to put it? It is laminated so it'll be protected from the elements from the water and it's a map of the city. Now all we're missing is an Australian flag. So if I can find one of those, maybe I could put it <clears throat> on that wall right there. A nice Australian flag for Frankie, right? All right, Frankie. Come take your tour. Come take your tour, it's all yours. Whoo. All right, y'all. After much wait and anticipation, the time has finally arrived. I'm just waiting on Egypt to bring me the ribbon. So we can literally do a ribbon cutting. We're gonna get the, uh, we're gonna get the aviary nice and set up with the ribbon and uh, finally unveil not only the 100% completed aviary, but the peacocks going again to the aviary as well. So All right, everybody, we have everyone outside and ready for the big ribbon cutting, right? We have my mom, my mother-in-law, Natalie. We have little Pharaoh. Some of you have been wanting to see him. <laughs> we have Sahara and we have Egypt. So let's go, y'all. I'm gonna walk backwards. And Egypt, as you can see, she has the big snippers. She's going to be unveiling and cutting the ribbon. It looks good. You ready for that? Okay. Let's do it. First, we need a countdown. Okay. Start from three all the way to one. 
Okay. Three, two, two one. one. Here, do it, do it right there. I think you have to do like a little bit. Let's of do time. it again. Yeah, okay, one more time. time. You ready? Three, two, two one. one. Yay! <laughs> there we go. So she we've said. cut the ribbon on it. So, uh, as y'all can see, Elvis and Priscilla are already in there. That was a mistake on my behalf. Um, I made their entrance, and they just bust through. So it's okay though. This just happened, so y'all are still getting to experience it with them just getting in. Come inside, everybody. <laughs> Last one in, please shut the door. They're most likely going to go into the original. You see yeah. how they just use that entrance? It looks Look at good. that. Oh, and that one just ran into the other one. That was Elvis that just ran into the other one. And Priscilla's in the middle section. Looks <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, so. Some of this stuff y'all haven't seen yet. What do you think, Natalie? I love how you did the branches. Which one specifically? This one? Yeah. If it's windy enough, it does sway. Yeah. But I like that it's heavy enough that it doesn't sway consistently. Right. So once they figure that out, and I'll try to get footage of that, y'all, but once they figure that out, we're definitely going to uh, share that with you. So. Look at this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is cute too. It's like a tree. Yeah, like what do you think, Claude? Yeah. I think it looks really good. It looks really, really good. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Looks nice. Nana? Nice, nice, nice. Idris, <laughs> might have to thoughts? come hide out here. I know, Mom. We could put some Idris, chairs with thoughts? some lemonade. Yeah, really. Yeah, really we could bring could. some chairs yeah. with lemonade. Yeah. Good. It's so and nice. Right oh, here. you did that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Fixed it all up. Yeah, yeah it looks good, babe. It looks really good. So the water came. So that way the water doesn't come through. Look at you. Yeah. And you added the little lining here, all around it. Yes, I Some added the lining. Yeah, it's uh. And you added the thing at the wire. bottom. Yep. I yep. don't know what that's called. Natalie's pointing out everything that's been done. So the the uh, predator apron, that's going all the way around the perimeter. Actually, they don't scare him. It's going all he the way down this side us. as well. So. Good job. Yeah. You like it, Ashley? Good job. It looks really good. Sahara likes it. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and about where Nana's standing is where we're likely going to plant a tree. And then against that wall over there, we want to find like a park bench or something like that. Yeah. That'd yeah. be nice because it's shaded. Yeah. Each of close those. Don't hold them like that, baby. It's sharp. All right. So now that you've gotten to see everyone's reaction to Elvis and Priscilla being in. Graceland, the renovated Graceland for the first time. Let's do the official tour. So, sorry about the wind. I am wearing a microphone, as y'all know. It's just really windy. Look at the trees. So, I'm not sure how much of this wind is being picked up by the microphone, but hopefully not that much. All right, so. If we start on this end over here, you can see that it runs down the length of the fence line where the original Graceland butts up perfectly against it. Then over here, we have where their food and water used to be. We do still have water in here for them just in case they um, are in this section and want to get to some water. As you can see, predator proof predator apron going all the way around, all the way around. Right here, the uh, predator apron is buried. So if anything tries to dig right there, it will eventually hit, it won't be able to get to it. And we have more going this way. The reason we have it on top of the ground is because eventually the grass will take it over. We're also thinking about either coming back through here with rocks or mulch over all of this area right here. So it works out perfect. You can see we have the original Graceland right here. Egypt, say hi. Hi. Sahara, say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, so in the original Graceland, they still have three roofs, one, two, and three. Has the roof on it, of course. We have the home sweet home sign that I picked out from Hobby Lobby. As we faced the renovated Graceland, you can see we have the sign. Um, which is their 
address, the address to Graceland, 0415. That has significant meaning. Many of you have already guessed it, and I've also put it down in the comments of past videos. Um, the window from Petal from the Past. We have the plants from Walmart that we got for a great deal hanging on the fixture that we got, the hangers that we got from Petal from the Past. And I think it just brings a lot of color and is very inviting and just makes you want to walk in and invites you, right? Once again, have these doorknobs that we got from thrifting about a year and a half ago from Nashville, Tennessee. A lock on the top, a lock on the bottom, and we could walk in. This door does open all the way back, as you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the door and show you what we've done on the inside. Come on, Sahara. There we go. So as you can see, um, as you can see, we have the, the roost in the corner and all of these sticks are from trees that we cut down two years ago on the property. So they're nice, solid, strong. Uh, so there's a roost option there, roost option down lower. We have this Facebook marketplace find, this wood spool. Uh, they originally wanted $60, but uh, got it for 20. So a really good deal. As you can see, they just use the entrance. I'll get to that. We have a roost right here. Then we have my favorite, which is this one. We have that roost right there, which is pretty cool. What do you think about that one? I like it. So we have that roost right there. And then over here, we have their food. As you can see, we have something for the fly control. We have their water. And this is the J uh, food fixture I built full as you can see as you can see has food in there water can't get in and then we get to the portion that I reinforced you saw this earlier in the video so that's going to maintain the integrity of the black tarp also over here some of you mentioned the opening over here we took care of that and we are going to eventually come back and put um, tubing right there that was a comment that one of you left so essentially any water that lands right there will land in the PVC tubing and then just flow that way. And we could even put a barrel or something right on the other side of this. That could be water catchment. I really love that idea. Um, so thank you all for all of your great ideas. Now, I wanna show you all that the openings, we decided just to go through with chicken wire because we felt like it breaks up the design of just being horse panel it flows into the door which has chicken wire and continues all the way around. So let me show you what that looks like from the outside. All right, y'all stay in there I'm a, so I can see y'all in there. So you see instead of being all horse panel, how it's nice and broken up. I think that looks nice. Let me know what y'all think. Look at Sahara, she just used the entrance herself to go into the next section. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so if we come, coming back in, uh, some of you did leave comments um, not fully understanding how we were going to connect the original Graceland to the renovated Graceland. So Sahara, walk in there. As you can see, we have this opening that was cut out that the birds already know how to use. There's a similar entrance on that side right there, and that's how they got to that smaller, you can. And that's how we got to the smaller portion. That's how they got over there to that smaller portion that has water. So there's two openings that connect all three pieces of their property. Do you think I can climb a bridge? <laughs> their property. I don't think you're strong enough. Do don't try, baby. Um, so come back through, Sahara. Perfect. Here, walk to daddy. Let's show them how you can walk through. Come here. Perfect. Okay. Now, Sahara, do me a favor. Walk into the peacocks. Walk all the way through. So as you can see, Sahara just went in there. And now Sahara, walk back. Walk back to daddy. <laughs> Good job. So boom, just like that, you could get in from one to the other. And this is big enough for an adult to get through. I could get through now, I could get through now, I could get through. Um, it's also worth pointing out that, of course, the original Graceland has a door itself. So we don't have to crawl through those entrances. 
we could just come through right here and it opens up. You coming out? I'm gonna do this again. Okay. Alrighty, so that is the official tour and grand opening of Graceland. Something that I thought was gonna take two days actually took closer to, <laughs> closer to seven, a week to get done from start to finish, details, um, not wanting to rush and, and get the peacocks in there, wanting to make sure I understood all the vulnerabilities so I could shore those up. I feel 100% confident that this structure is sound and they'll be safe in there. Can I get a thumbs up? What do y'all think? Double thumbs up. Do you like it? Is, is it cool? <laughs> How old are you, Sahara? Three. Okay. How old are you, Egypt? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. When's your birthday? June the 5th. June the 5th? I think that's one of the addresses on here. And your birthday's when? Mm-hmm. When's your birthday? It's dinosaur. <laughs> that was the theme of your birthday party last year, but when is your birthday? Do you remember? Mm-hmm. June 26th. Say, say June 26. June 26. Yep. And Mine's on Frankie. as some of you have already guessed, no. as you just heard me tell Sahara, her birthday is June 26. The address to go Topia. And Egypt, where's yours at? Over there on Frankie's house. Wow. Where's yours at, Egypt? All the way over there on Frankie's house. Yep. Frankie's oh. house right there. Hey, is where Egypt's is. And this one is 0415, which is Pharaoh's birthday. So if you're wondering what the uh, address is and what the significance of the addresses are, that's it. All right, so we're gonna leave um, Elvis and Priscilla to take a look at their renovated Graceland, the, the three bed, two bath, swimming pool on the way water feature <laughs> but uh we'll we'll leave them to uh take a tour of their own and we have something else that's about to happen probably in about 30 minutes really? but that's going to be in the next video yes so y'all will see that in our next upload which should be wednesday i'm excited i don't know the date because obviously you could be watching this video like a year from now what's the date on wednesday um, the first is Monday, the so the, no, third. the third is the third. Yes, yeah, so because we would have had fair on the Monday. Yeah, so yeah. Mon so Wednesday, May third, twenty twenty three, is when you'll see the video of the next surprise that we have, and this one isn't random. It's something we've had in the works since like December, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Everybody, good job, bro. All right, so y'all know the deal. Y'all know the deal. If you liked what you saw today, please like and subscribe, share our video. Welcome to all our new subscribers. Welcome to everyone from Cog Hill Farm or those that found us just through the browse feature or suggestions from YouTube. And we'll see y'all next time. Peace. <laughs> Say peace. <laughs> <laughs>